हेलो एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग मकर संक्रांति और बाकी जो भी uh, इसके साथ में विभिन्न विभिन्न नामों से हमारे क्रॉस इंडिया त्योहार हैं तो सभी को बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं और उम्मीद करते हैं कि आने वाला टाइम आप सभी के लिए मार्केट और पर्सनल फ्रंट पे बहुत अच्छा रहे तो आज का सेशन वी हैव प्लान्ड टू डिस्कस फ्यू ब्रॉड कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक हाउ वी आर डूइंग इन करंट मार्केट एंड हाउ वी आर प्लेसिंग आर सेल्फ और विल विल आल्सो बी डिस्कसिंग लाइक इंडिया ग्रोथ स्टोरी इज इट रियली सेकुलर और देर आर एनी न्यूंसिस टू इट एंड डेफिनेटली सम डिस्कशन वुड बी ऑन पॉकेट्स ऑफ वैल्यू एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम and also we would also be covering context of uh, impending rate cuts so going forward and meanwhile uh, once we have a discussion around uh, these uh, pointers so if as and when you have questions so definitely would love to take your questions so ravi bhai over to you we can i mean start with the session Um, yeah so like uh, thanks prinsoy for the like setting up the context of today's discussion and uh, like you know i would uh, like to go with uh, the fa- most favorite question uh, among you know all market participants right now that what are we doing in current market scenario like everyone thinks that the market is pretty much you know overvalued or overheated and like uh, what to do Uh, like you know in such in, in such a scenario because uh, again while people are enjoying uh, rising profits but at the same time they are very wary of you know putting in fresh capital and they are also like you know indecisive or like they like are in a fix uh, you know about what to do with the profit which is notional right now so like the current market scenario in my opinion is a very important aspect uh, related to like you know what uh, i mean has been the most uh, like you know uh, talked about uh, theories in investing that is value investing that like in the in a situation which like we have right now one can try to practice the very subtle art of trying to sit on meaningful size of cash because like we all know that like you know at some point or the other there will be some correction or like even in these like very richly valued markets there will be some you know pockets of uh, like you know value yeah under valuation which which need to be explored but for largely practicing you know different trades because practice only makes us perfect and like you know as student of markets we need to practice different trades which are required by mr market in order to see us successful and of that of those trades one of the most important trades is the ability to sit on meaningful sizable amount of cash if at all possible at one's end so that's what uh, like you know in my opinion uh, like uh, what one can do or like or uh, at least in personal capacity what i am doing right now so prince bhai would you like to add something on to it so ravi bhai when when we say this like uh, another question which comes to my mind and i would uh, like to uh, have your views around that so basically what happens everybody has uh, this opinion at this point in time that uh, there is uh, i mean although there are few pockets of opportunities but broadly uh, the market do not have uh, so many opportunities as uh, it was the case uh, when uh, the correction happened in march last year or maybe in 2020 but again uh, when when we are in such a situation so one side says that we should uh, be sitting on our winners and contrary to which some mm-hmm. people have a, have an impression or uh, maybe a thought process that uh, they should be booking profits and keeping in cash so how you be i mean uh, this dilemma whether we should book profits or keep on sitting on our winners so how to make a segregation on these two aspects so prince bhai like uh, you know i would like to start with uh, one very famous adage the glass is always half full half empty 
while it is true that we have had a very you know a strong good rally welcome rally but uh, the sectoral spread of that rally has been largely limited if you look at defense uh, forging then railway and one or two more themes you can point out apart from that the market has been pretty much uh, like you know uh, in the doldrums in fact there are pretty opportunities where like you know, not much attention have has been made one minute one minute one minute Prince? Yeah, 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 Ravi. Uh -huh. One minute, sir. Just, just one minute. Some issue no with issues. my phone. Meanwhile, uh, I'll, I'll take the uh, my. So basically, I also uh, encounter this kind of uh, situation wherein uh, few, few uh, picks which are like uh, which have done pretty well and. Uh, ah. Right, so, uh, like, uh, can I? Okay, uh, please continue. Please go ahead. Uh -huh, please, please, over to you. So, like, you know, uh, as far as booking profit or like holding on to your winners is concerned, one needs to be very case specific. Uh, like, whether the their winners, the so called winners, are like, you know, uh, they belong to some of these overheated sectors. Their like you know proper valuation metric, whatever metric is suited for those that particular sector, it has gone over the roof. These things need to be taken and studied on case to case basis, because the moment we try to go for one size fits all approach, that is where like we get stuck. So like for example, I would uh, mention here like SME sector has been under a tremendous like you know bull run bubble whatever we can say. But then painting that entire like you know SME space is full with you know matlab, uh, firms which are uh, embroiled in what people call like you know cornering the float or pump and dump etc would be like a bit you know far stretched. We need to you know be very case specific, business specific. Then only we can go for a proper decision. But yes, th this can be a proper uh, like you know guiding tool that whether like our winners are belonging to these fancy sectors which have been under very tremendous focus in the recent past. So that is how I would go ahead with it. Right, Ravi. And Ravi, like uh, basically in this situation, we, we are uh, experienced one thing like we are more uh, in inclined towards the storification on different sectors, be it EV or other uh, hot sectors of the uh, market, rather than like focusing on the old economy. So, do you do you think like when we, uh, I mean, when uh, it comes to uh, talking about at this point in time, where exactly the value is available, right? So, do you think cold economy is one place where we have enough value at this point in time also? So with regard to see like uh, for first for the first part of the question, yes, like I have like the kind of investor I am, I have focused more onto the old economy side. The reason being that that uh, like, you know, renewable EV or like any other new age, uh, you know, tech companies, they have not, uh, you know, delivered to the uh, to the promise which they had made in the beginning. Uh, they have to show the numbers. The narrative is pretty strong. Then, like you know, the case for them is also uh, for them is pretty strong. But then the story has hasn't played out the way it should have actually. While on the other hand, like you know, these old economy sectors, like uh, you know, you can take like iron, steel, mining, like and again, just I'm taking few names. Okay, so like they have been starved of like fresh capital investments for close to more than a decade. If you take example, Prince Bhai, uh, like in the entire second decade of uh, the current millennium, there was not even a single green field power project put, uh, you know, thermal power project put in, in India. So you can understand from this, like, you know, that in a country which is as power hungry like India, uh, there was absolutely no fresh investment in this regard. So as a result of which there was like, you know, a huge opportunity in old economy sector, but uh, certain verticals of the old economy sector specifically like, you know, uh, 
like epc infra then like you know even power uh, and transmission and all uh, transformers etc they have attracted a lot of uh, like you know smart money or attention uh, investors attention in the recent time so like you know the scope of like you know pockets of uh, undervaluation there has been uh, a bit tight now has become a bit tight now but uh, like you know i mean certain sectors but due to their extreme cyclicality inherent in those sectors i would refrain from naming them but yeah the old economy sector has attracted a lot of attention uh, in past uh, two years you to have witnessed that prince bhai fair point ravi so ravi like i mean if if we specifically talk about the beaten down names or the highly ignored sectors hardly any any uh, segments come to my mind so any any segments which you see uh, are like uh, broadly not the flavor of the market and shall do good from here city so gas distribution of... city gas ah. distribution is one place i think uh, maybe value is still available but yeah would yes, invite yes. you so like you know with the benefit of hindsight uh, prince bhai like uh, we had had a word regarding you know logistics then shrimp sector like like shrimp or aquaculture whatever you want to name it you know and uh, we had this conversation like around 3 4 months back even then market was pretty hot but these sectors were like you know i mean uh, in a sweet spot where like uh, there was not much attention there was a prolonged period of consolidation and there were certain triggers which were like you know in the pipeline to like you know trigger the sector for a uh, like you know revival or re-rating whatever you want to say so that's their one thing second like you know in terms of pockets uh, like which are still undervalued or relatively neglected i mean yes uh, quite a few good people have talked about them if we see the large caps actually uh, they do offer a very good uh, like you know position for like uh, a value investor today especially the large cap banks private banks as well as public sector ones then in my opinion agrochemical still has a considerable amount of you know valuation comfort inherent there then like you know uh, further 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 um again we have one two more sectors are there but then they are very cyclical in nature and like you know i mean uh, i wouldn't deem uh, like you know it uh, like right to talk them on a pub- talk about them on a public forum so like there are certain uh, like prince by uh, like it is a it is known to everyone that in markets there are there is always opportunity for you if you have the right eye and the right temperament to look for it so like you know just being you know uh, overwhelmed by the fact that that nifty has gone to this level and that level uh, do not carry that mindset have an you know keen eye eager uh, ears to like you know explore whatever is happening all around you so that will always help you to you know uh, look out for value uh, opportunities as far as city gas distribution uh, uh, like you know the part which you mentioned just now uh, in my opinion nearly all the companies which are engaged in like uh, gas distribution natural gas distribution be it gujarat gas city gas distribution or even uh, like adanis uh they will be uh, seeing significant amount of act, uh, like you know activity going into the future primarily because there is a lot of thrust in uh, you know increasing their network coverage and also it 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 will benefit from uh, soothing out uh, natural gas prices so in my opinion i agree with uh, that part uh, that uh, city natural gas distribution question which you raised right ravi and ravi like uh, although you uh, already touched upon the sabse jo difficult question is time pe maximum janta ke sath hai ki jo incremental cash hai theek hai barring ki pehle se cash mein hai ya abhi apni koi position cut karke cash mein aa rahe hain that is a different aspect jo incremental cash hai usko leke logo ka opinion divided hai few people are of the uh, 
opinion that they are keeping in cash and they are expecting some volatility going forward aur dusra so, ek, uh, ek uh-huh. there is one set of people who believe ki are hame always opportunities milti hai aur hum invested rehte hain so how i mean isme kaise if we can fine tune our positioning ki so that कि क्योंकि यार देखो इन्वेस्टेड रहने में कोई बुराई नहीं है बट फिर उस टाइम पे जब करेक्शन होती है तब आपके पास कैश ना हो तो वो चीज बहुत अखरती है सो ठीक है प्रिंस भाई सो सी मैं वो शेयर करता हूँ जो मैं प्रैक्टिस करता हूँ एंड uh, मेरा ये मानना है कि वी हमें मार्केट में सर्वाइव एंड सक्सेसफुल होने के लिए डिफरेंट ट्रेड प्रैक्टिस करने ही होते हैं और उनमें से सबसे मुश्किल ट्रेड होता है एबिलिटी टू सिट ऑन कैश एंड नॉट बिकॉज लाइक यू नो मार्केट ओवर हीटेड है या फिर ये रीजन या वो रीजन द कोर रीजन इज दैट आपको वैसी अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं मिल रही है जिसके साथ आप कंफर्टेबल हो, हो हो पा रहे हो जब ही आपको वैसी अपॉर्चुनिटी मिलेगी चाहे करेक्शन में मिले चाहे बिना करेक्शन के मिले यू शुड आपको उसमें आगे बढ़ करके उसमें इन्वेस्ट करना चाहिए सो ब्रॉडर मार्केट के मरूनिंग्स एक चीज है बट आप जो आपके पोर्टफोलियो का ख्याल रखना वो दूसरी चीज है और दूसरी वाली जो है वो आपकी व्यक्तिगत जिम्मेदारी है जिसके लिए आप पूरी तरह से जिम्मेदार हो सो मेरे मेरे हिसाब से जब भी आपको एक अच्छी अपॉर्चुनिटी मिलती है जो अंडर वैल्यूड है जहां पे मार्जिन ऑफ सेफ्टी कंफर्टेबल है एक वो सेक्टर एक लंबे पीरियड ऑफ कॉन्सल्टेशन से निकल रहा है या फिर कॉन्सल्टेशन में है वैसे सेक्टर अगर वैसा अगर कोई अपॉर्चुनिटी मिलता है आपको तो आप प्लीज आगे जाइए और इन्वेस्ट कीजिए वरना अगर नहीं मिल रहा है तो ये प्रैक्टिस दैट इज द एबिलिटी टू सिट ऑन कैश उसको प्रैक्टिस करना भी काफी महत्वपूर्ण है बिकॉज सी एक बुल रन में क्या होता है जो बेचा था वो भी ऊपर जा रहा है जिसको खरीदना चाहता हूं वो भी ऊपर जा रहा है जिसको देख रहा था वो भी ऊपर जा रहा है तो वहीं पे आप जो फियर ऑफ मिसिंग आउट फोमो उसके लिए आप पुश होते हो कोई और पुश नहीं करता है आपको आपका जो पर्सनल एम्बिशन या ग्रीड जो भी बोल लीजिए वो पुश करता है आपको एंड अल्टीमेटली हम कहीं ना कहीं गलती कर बैठते हैं सो लाइक यू नो इन माई ओपिनियन दिस इज वॉट आई प्रैक्टिस राइट और और रवि लाइक सिंस वी आर इन इलेक्शन ईयर और अभी इंटरम बजट भी आने वाला है एक फरवरी को और ऑल दो लाइक देखो सीइंग द रिजल्ट ऑफ आई मीन द स्टेट इलेक्शन रिजल्ट्स व्हिच हैपेंड रिसेंटली तो उससे तो एक मार्केट में पॉजिटिविटी बनी हुई है बट व्हेन इट कम्स टू इलेक्शन तो देयर आर ऑलवेज टू साइड्स टू इट ऑल दो one one पोलिटिकल पार्टी अपीयर्स टू बट यू नेवर नो वॉट कैन हैपन इन एन इलेक्शन तो अगर एक एक हाइपोथेटिकल ये लेके चलते हैं कि करंट गवर्नमेंट रिपीट नहीं होती है वो एक सिनारी है तो उसको हम कैसे वे करके चले अपने इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लान को लेके नंबर वन और दूसरा जो इंटरम बजट अभी आने वाला है तो उसमें क्या एक हम एक्सपेक्टेशन क्योंकि फ्रेश मतलब जो ऑर्डर जैसे अब आज ही एक जगह बात हो रही थी तो बहुत ज्यादा ऑर्डर्स अभी नए नहीं आ रहे हैं जो इंफ्रा से भी रिलेटेड कंपनीज हैं कंपनीज ऑफ द लाइक्स ऑफ एनएचएआई जी 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 तो अगर ये अनसर्टेनिटी को सेल करना है तो कैसे लग रहा है कि गोइंग फॉरवर्ड क्या हो सकता है तो सर लाइक फॉर द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन सी यस लाइक इफ इन केस देर इज अक यू नो गवर्नमेंट चेंज इट विल बी अ मेजर शॉकर फॉर द मार्केट बिकॉज गिवेन द कंटेक्स ऑफ रिसेंट इलेक्शन इन थ्री स्टेट्स थ्री और फोर स्टेट्स लाइक यू नो देर वॉज देर इज अक लार्ज स्केल एग्रीमेंट दैट यस द करेंट गवर्नमेंट विल रिपीट एंड यस इफ इन केस देर इज अ सरप्राइज द मार्केट विल ऑल्सो रिएक्ट इन अ सरप्राइज मैनर so that's there and second for the part uh, like you know the budget aspect which you touched upon so the the coming budget will be actually a vote on account the tradition and like though it's not anywhere written in law or constitution per se but the tradition is that that outgoing governments do not announce major capex or policy changes in their last budget 
because they themselves are not sure or they cannot or they should not say with certainty that we will be there for like you know implementing them because it becomes pretty embarrassing like you know you go for big ticket announcements this investment that capex and all and then somehow the like you know you were not able to fare through the elections properly and then you are not there to implement those schemes as a, and hence the entire exercise becomes futile so generally the last budget is restricted to vote on account that is money uh, uh, approval for withdrawal of money from uh, consolidated fund of india for the general you know expenses of the government uh things are uh, you know restricted pretty much to that one aspect which i would like to add to this prince that from quite a few analyst i have come across that like you know uh, india's growth story is a uh, secular one uh, and it is indifferent to any political event uh, while this statement uh, like you know pol- and the political event here being like you know change in government so while this statement to an extent is fine because if you see very carefully there is like across the political spectrum there is a bipartisan unity across india's you know political spectrum regarding the economic steps which need to be taken for example i would say liberalization privatization globalization was ushered in india by like then the Cong- then congress government and it was like you know further pushed uh, to the like you know to strength by like you know atal bihari vajpayee ji similarly like if you see in the recent past also several key measures were pushed in initially by another government and then the, like you know when the government change happened the new government uh, further strengthened those uh, measures be it like you know aadhar gst whatever we can talk so that is one aspect of thing and hence it is to that extent it is right to say that like you know india's growth story is secular but then like you know the problem in such a narrative is that that people excuse me tend to forget the aspect of political economy that is that like you know there is a strong correlation uh, as well as direct relation between the political regime or like government and the overall economic policy and economic direction in which the country is directed to so if i would like to quote here see the the relation is so strong that in the past if people might have if, if anyone has read history properly so the ship which came to india's coast by vasco da gama in calicut it was sponsored by you know portugal's uh, like the royal family even the east india company which came and colonized india its original equity of 1 lakh pound was contributed by british royal family so there has always been very 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 strong relation between the political setup and the overall economic uh, you know economy's tonality in a particular economy so outrightly dismissing that like you know come what may be this party or that party this leader or that leader uh, india's growth story will remain secular that is a bit fastest yes india's growth story will remain resilient because for india's case growth and development are not aspiration they are existential requirements so to that extent i agree but outrightly saying that like you know there is uh, like in the current scenario or setup of uh, like if, uh, if we talk in terms of uh, market dynamics uh, outrightly dismissing you know the uh, like uh, election aspect i think it will be a bit uh, wrong in my opinion prince fair point and we we uh, have a similar like uh, obviously some volatility short term volatility uh, is uh, definitely be a part to it if uh, any changes uh, from the normal expectations happen but again broadly we are on the right path and uh, even uh, a change of government uh, will not uh, materially change uh, the secular growth story so ravikant i mean uh, seeing the current context so when it comes to like uh, the interest rate so do you see any rate cuts or maybe how things can go from here and uh, especially you were talking about the banks uh, beat the large banks or the psus the credit cycle appears to be uh, uh, 
very very comfortable and uh, the growth is uh, promising so uh, what what you uh, see in in sense of rate cuts from here so prince uh, like as uh, several indicators are pointing out and there is a large scale uh, you know unsaid agreement also among experts that yes uh, like uh, rate cuts are pretty much in the offing and we can expect a series of rate cuts uh, in the coming fiscal year uh, from india's perspective because in us it is from 1st january the fiscal year changes uh, for us it changes from 1st april so like you know that's there and uh, you know uh, it will be interesting to look at how things play out because there is a lot of exuberance uh, like you know i have come across articles where it says that a tsunami of money uh, foreign money is just waiting to come back to indian equity markets uh, with the rate cuts and again uh, just like anything the glass is half full half empty here also the thing is that yes definitely as rate cuts will usher in there will be a lot of liquidity flowing into the market but if we look at the history of rate cuts uh, uh, for empirical you know evidence we do see that rate cuts largely work via j curve effect that is like you know the initial impact of rate cuts is actually negative on the markets and there are several reasons to it but yeah after that initial uh, jerk and the extent of jerk depends on other factors also like you know whether the economy is in recession or there are some geopolitical risk or not but yeah after the initial jerk there is a like you know secular growth trend which is often observed in you know uh, like post rate cuts so one of the reason uh, like and again a key uh, beneficiary from indian equity uh, market perspective if we see uh like you know our, uh, our large cap banks are uh, being uh, pointed out or uh, singled out for like you know as major beneficiary of rate cuts but it will be interesting to see because see on one side yes it is true that a lot of foreign funding uh, like will uh, run towards those institutions but at the same time with falling rates they will have to immediately cut down their like uh you know their lending rates but the deposit rates on several products which they offer they do not come down so uh, like you know so sharply and at the same time and as a result you know we can witness the net interest margin compression in these institutions so it will be a con- you know conflux of uh, several uh, like uh, aspects which need to be looked at and then only one can actually uh, plan out a strategy to work on to them fair point ravi so uh, one uh, one one point i would like to add uh, like you know it slipped out of my mind regarding the like that question pockets of val- uh, uh, like you know under valuation so apart from large scale banks micro finance player the big ones they also offer like significant uh, valuation comfort and then one needs to be very cognizant to uh, you know special situations uh, which is evolving in certain companies uh companies which are announcing very uh, like you know strong uh, numbers regarding capex and those who have a track record as well of uh, you know walking the talk so there are a couple of names uh, you can definitely uh, search for them so these are again some more pointers for uh, pocket of value which one can explore great so ravi kant i see like uh, you had also invested in these companies obviously naming companies is uh, not required but uh, talking about the shipping companies and all uh, companies so at current point in time how much value or maybe if i, I were to ask you like would you be investing in these companies at uh, today's uh, from today's point of view or uh, you have a different view or it was sometime so, in the past there okay. was value how mm mm-hmm. so uh, prince bhai so my thesis of investing into firms related into logistics or like even shipping for that matter has been the fact that if india has to grow uh, exports have to like you know go up because there is not even a single example of a company or oh, sorry of a country which has grown sans you know exports so my thesis was that and yes like you know 
the particular company under question whether it is offering me decent margin of safety or not like you know uh, key metrics like p for that matter like you know the since it's a capex heavy uh, uh, sector we are talking about uh, like uh, what is uh, their interest coverage uh, what is their debt and like you know uh, like companies often engage into uh, off balance sheet financing so like you know getting a holistic view of their debt not just what is quoted on the balance sheet so my uh, like you know my investment the original investment thesis is based on these aspects as far as the current scenario is concerned the problem is largely coming from geopolitical aspects with respect to that how you know how the rebels attacking vessels in red sea and like even in uh, parts of indian ocean so that makes the like you know the entire uh, like uh, scenario pretty turbid and one needs to be cautious and uh, in in fact in my opinion one needs to wait in uh, like you know for, uh, wait first so that things settle down and a better clarity emerges because see uh, like in my opinion uh, the biggest challenge an investor in market has their perspective and horizon it will depend what is your perspective is and what is your time horizon if you are a long term investor and by long term investor i mean that you are a person who can buy and hold for good 2 3 years then like you know these uh, like small scale geopolitical events and let me again add a rider here it may be so that such small scale geopolitical events may you know snowball into bigger issues also then one needs to take like uh, a, com- a holistic call again but like you know if once horizon is uh, good enough uh, then i mean they can f- explore this sector for sure all right ravi i also see vineet uh, so vineet if you are free i uh, would uh, love to have your views as well and uh, ravi and you can uh, share your thoughts around the same topic going on so meanwhile uh, ravi uh, another uh, thing which you discussed forging so forging companies uh, i mean if my memory serves me right although i haven't tracked uh, many uh, but uh, they had done uh, well so going forward also you see these companies uh, shall do good or uh, uh, there is, there are any nuances or maybe limitations or things need to be seen uh, in the forging sector because there are many companies right yes so like sir like uh, the original thesis uh, based on which you know this entire sector came into the uh, like you know limelight still is still pretty intact that is like you know man uh, push towards manufacturing euro plus one manufacturing uh, like forging manufacturing etc becoming very expensive in other countries so those factors are still pretty much relevant and like there is a huge runway for these companies but that being said as like you know mr market is uh, mr market always swings between two extremes and in my opinion the valuations uh, in you know of the companies in this particular domain they are through the roof and they are yet to show that like you know they can deliver uh, what they have talked in past yes a couple of them are taking very serious concrete measures in order to scale themselves up in order to like you know add value and uh, to their product as well as product portfolio broadbanding uh like a very recently a very prominent you know darling in this particular domain has appointed one of the big four consultants in order to you know give them strategic inputs regarding scaling up their business so like one can keep a tab on such developments because these developments these qualitative developments tell us about the intent of that company that whether they themselves want to grow or not or they are just limelight hoggers like recent very recently we have that example of ultra cab or some company was there where like you know just like uh, you know since the entire wire industry is in like you know limelight the promoters like talked big and then later on they dumped their shares in the market and they like i mean it was a uh, like classic case uh, which we have seen quite a few times earlier also so one needs to be very vigilant like you know especially in a sector which has been under focus is already pretty you know piping red hot but again since the 
prospect in that particular domain is pretty rich one needs to be like you know i mean tracking the sector very closely right ravi so ravi uh, vinit also join us and uh, welcome vinit i think uh, it's for the first time we are getting you hi hi vinit sir hi hi ravi ji hi prince thank you so much so so vinit uh, ravi and i were holistically discussing like uh, at present point in time uh, what opportunities we are seeing and uh, i mean how we are placing ourselves with cash or uh, finding value in this market so sector ravi also pointed out and you also cover uh, very well is shrimp sector so starting with vinit so vinit would love to have your views like from now why we would be looking at this sector and what what made you uh, make some investments obviously talking specific names is uh, not required but again as a sector we can holistically discuss and then we take uh, further points from ravi so no happy to happy to speak about uh, the shrimp sector and 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 other things as well uh, so look uh, we all like to find these you know sectors that uh, hated uh, by the market for a long time and value is suppressed and the companies have been struggling because of multiple factors right uh, now the shrimp sector has been one which was in a massive fancy 7 uh, 8 years back uh when we had these uh, you know huge bull runs and uh, names like avanti feeds etc uh, they became uh, you know multi baggers in really short amounts of time extremely loved companies and then a whole host of factors over the last few years have hit the industry uh some structural uh, some were temporary they kept moving in and out uh but the biggest structural factor that hit the indian shrimp industry was the emergence of equidor as uh the you know the the primary competition uh, for us in a sense and uh that market the location of ecuador as well the fact that it's significantly closer to the united states which is one of the largest markets uh for indian shrimp companies as well started then having a uh, significant pressure on indian shrimp players and the reason ecuador did well obviously was uh you know there were multiple reasons but one of the primary reasons was that they had tremendous support from their government uh there were huge subsidies diesel subsidies that were given uh, to the industry so their cost structures were significantly reduced and they were then able to push their products out into the markets like the us at lower rates and then that put a downward price pressure on indian shrimp players as well and that made us slightly less competitive as compared to what we were uh when we were in the uh, massive bull phase 6 or 7 years back in the shrimp sector uh so because of these reasons this sector has been you know battered and bruised for a very long time and uh so the prices are low uh some companies trading almost at levels uh which are you know lower than the total asset block on their balance sheet so almost you know at bankruptcy levels and the market had assumed that this is a sector that is doomed to remain under pressure and some companies and smaller companies doomed to fail uh and you know in these kind of scenarios when there is then some fundamental change or fundamental trigger that comes in uh i personally find those opportunities quite exciting the fundamental change in this case was ecuador has now in the last few months started to struggle a little bit on two counts one there is massive political unrest in that country uh i'm not sure if you know many of you have seen some of those videos where uh you know certain uh jails and the prisoners have taken the guards captive uh, and there is this uh you know uh, massive movement around the country uh there has been a lot of political violence uh and there is uh you know significant chance of serious chance of there being significant civil unrest uh, in the country this is happening on the back of the fact that the economy of ecuador has been struggling for some time inflation is very high uh and uh, two months back uh, the government pulled uh, you know in a 
in a step to reduce their fiscal spending they pulled out the diesel subsidy that they were giving to the shrimp sector and this uh, diesel subsidy the energy cost is a significant portion of uh, the cost of production of shrimp and the overall cost structure of these companies this is factor number 1 Factor number two, uh, the fact that Ecuador had been exporting shrimps at uh, significantly lower prices uh, into the U.S. is, you know, uh, is, is pretty evident to uh, the lawmakers in the U.S. as well. And the U.S., by the way, themselves also have a small uh, shrimp industry. And uh, because those people, they manufacture in the U.S. where the cost base is anyway very high. So they were actually hit a lot more than the Indian shrimp players were because of this dumping of uh, shrimp by Ecuador. Uh, and those players then filed a petition uh, with the Department of Commerce in the United States uh, asking for an evaluation of an anti-dumping duty. So that evaluation is going on at the moment and there are two types of requests. There's a countervailing duty and there is an anti-dumping duty. The countervailing duty in all likelihood will get approved and will happen not just to Ecuador, but also to India. Actually. So Indian shrimp also will face a countervailing duty that will be about 3 to 4 percent, somewhere in that range of the, uh, the cost of uh, sale. But the anti-dumping duty is specifically for Ecuador, it's not for India. And that uh, judgment is expected sometime in the month of March or April. Now, there's no way of knowing for with certainty whether the duty will be imposed. But uh, if you just look at the numbers and the kind of uh, bleeding that the American shrimp producers have seen in the recent past, it, it seems like the odds of the anti-dumping duty coming through may not be very low. And again, I'm not making a prediction. Uh, I'm just looking at it as a possible event which comes on the backdrop of an already struggling shrimp industry in Ecuador, the, which the numbers are not yet reflecting. These are factors that have only started to change recently. The numbers are still pretty good. And that's why uh, by causation, the numbers of the Indian shrimp industry have not yet improved. Uh, but this is just you know multiple factors where things seem to be going right at the same time for the Indian shrimp industry and wrong for the Ecuador shrimp industry. And so I started looking at this sector uh, about a month and a half or two months back when some of these changes started happening and I saw uh, value uh, in a few players and that's when I decided to take a position purely because I felt it was a uh, good risk reward where the odds of some of these events that are lined up happening seem fairly high. And when you compare that to the valuation that with some of these players were available, I saw there was significant margin of safety and not much money to be lost. Uh, and so I started out with a couple of positions. They're not very large positions, of course, because these depend on many of these things that I've spoken out actually playing out. Uh, but if they do play out, I think the upside is fairly large. Uh, and that's the thesis part. Great, Vinny. And Ravi, like uh, we have been talking since long and uh, discussing about this sector in particular. So, any anything different or different view you have, or like you have been, uh, I mean, you had been invested and following this uh, closely quite a while. So, what was your uh, thesis when you invested first, and uh, how you see it going for forward from here also? So, like. Uh... Like Vinit Pai very aptly has uh, like you know pointed out what all is going and what all is happening in the sector. Uh, like my initial thesis like was to look out for companies because yes, uh, this particular sector has been in the doldrums for quite some time, and uh, it's a sector which is uh, like you know largely export oriented. And as I said uh, some time back, that uh, like for any country's growth. Uh, like uh, exports are a key factor so from that perspective i started exploring this particular sector and like on like i would like to add uh, some like you know aspects to what vinit bhai said just now so 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 like one of the key aspects uh, like uh, with respect to indian shrimp industry is that 
our players are now graduating more into like you know the value added segment of the shrimp sector rather than simply like you know exporting processed shrimp so quite a few players have now started going into like you know uh, their own brands then uh, venturing into like ready to eat uh, uh, domain uh, because uh, originally they were largely restricted to ready to cook only then furthermore like uh, they have started exploring new markets because earlier if you see majority of the exports were largely restricted to the western hemisphere but now some companies have started exploring markets like uh, in the eastern hemisphere as well and this uh, like you know uh, change uh, provides a unique opportunity for the overall sh uh, sh sector also because the uh, requirement the taste uh, uh, like you know uh, what uh, like uh, like taste preference in the western and the eastern hemisphere is quite uh, different and this allows the shrimp players to utilize or monetize their pro, uh, product uh, production uh, like you know to the maximum extent possible uh, so like yeah uh, this is what i wanted to add further thanks ravi so we need the uh, apart from shrimp sector like uh, as we were discussing previously any anything more uh, wherein you are uh, like pursuing uh, closely and you see still have value around uh, any any pockets vinit ravi is he audible to you i can see him unmuted but i am unable to listen yeah, yeah vinit right, right now i was just struggling with my my headphones uh, apologies for that i i missed your question uh, prince can you please so i mean uh, uh, it's repeating error not error ravi is it working prince bhai your voice is echoing actually everybody is echoing up to what is happening so we need any more pockets which you see uh, value is available value is available sure can you hear me now your audio is pretty feeble you need bhai is it better now Still pretty low. Let maybe me, some. Let me, let me, Prince. Let me just uh, let me fix this. You can maybe give the next question to to Ravi or somebody else. I'll just fix this and uh, rejoin in a minute. So meanwhile, let meanwhile, me check comments. Let me check comments. Ravi, it's echoing for me as well, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's much better now. so so uh, shriyam shrivasta shrivasta va right so he has made a great point like he, he was uh, he just mentioned that nilesh shah sir has uh, mentioned in july month outlook the safest bet from any macro or and issue is in real time is like domestic focused companies in large and mid cap space yeah i mean that's a very valid statement uh, because the moment we go for like sectors which are more external oriented or export oriented we need to factor in lot many uh, like you know aspects like slowing down economic trends in the west then like you know uh, so like geopolitical issues like uh, uh, as we are witnessing in the red sea right now so like you know the domestic consumption story or like you know any story which is related largely to the like uh, within the country uh, it is much safer uh, like bet to look at to right so vinith uh, is it better now yeah i can i can hear you now can you hear me yes yes so we need yes, uh, like uh, yeah ravi just made a point like uh, nilesh shah has mentioned that uh, we should all be focusing on uh, the domestic focused companies in the especially in the mid and large cap space 
although i mean uh, what i have seen uh, your investing style you definitely look for pockets in the small and micro caps but again and do you do you uh, buy that statement and if you uh, how you are placing yourself and after that we'll be like talking about more opportunities which you are looking at currently yeah no i agree with nilesh uh, shah ji uh, actually and this has been my focus for some time now uh, i think it's a uh, look there are two types of uh spends that a consumer uh does right uh typically uh one is discretionary and one is non-discretionary spends now in developed markets in uh europe for example has been struggling for some time now uh in the us there has been a talk of recession for a very long time it hasn't come through uh till now my sense is and i'm here in the us actually and you know i'm uh in the market in a sense speaking to a lot of people uh and i do keep an eye out on uh you know the macro factors as well my sense is that there is a a higher probability of a recessionary environment developing in the us than a lot of market participants are ascribing at the moment and not just in india but even in the us you would have seen the us markets have been rallying uh for some time on anticipations of uh, rate cards the bond market uh you know yields have dropped significantly uh as well uh now uh, my sense is that the reason that's uh reason the, the odds of a recession are actually slightly higher than what people are factoring in is because i think that the growth numbers that we are seeing currently in the us is largely driven by fiscal spending in the us and the fiscal deficit in the us for for the year 2023 was almost to the tune of 2 trillion dollars that's about 6 or 7% of the gdp which is very very high uh if you look at you know the historical uh, fiscal deficit numbers in the us they don't go to such high levels and they don't stay at such high levels for a long time uh that on the back of the fact that uh the overall debt uh for the us economy is very very high uh so for this kind of level of fiscal spending to continue in the year 2024 i think is a challenge and maybe it will continue at least till uh you know the second half of the year because elections uh going to happen here in the us uh later in 2024 uh but post that uh, there will almost certainly be fiscal contraction and that's the time when uh, the odds of uh monetary uh uh you know liquidity coming through through rate cuts is higher so i i'm not of the view that we will see a rate cut in the month of march uh, of course uh, you know this is a rudimentary analysis and there are a lot of people much wiser and much smarter than me who are also having a look at this picture but just because i'm here in the market and i'm uh, you know trying to get a sense of the, uh, the 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 pulse on the ground here uh, i think the uh, the overall economy uh, in the us might not be out of the roll drums at least for another 6 to 8 months and if that is the case then that's going to have a spillover effect on uh indian companies which are export uh, oriented because most sectors leave aside pharma are catering to discretionary uh, side of the value chain uh, in one way or another so i subscribe to nilesh ji's you sorry for the long winded answer but uh essentially i i agree that uh domestic focus uh focused companies Uh, is where uh, we should be able to try and find opportunities and on a sectoral level i think uh, maybe banks to a certain extent at a sectoral level might still have value apart from that honestly i don't see value or you know obviously not deep value but even value in any sectors per se that said there are still enough and many individual opportunities in multiple sectors which offer value even in this market and i think that's our job as investors to uh, you know try and find those pockets uh, and see if we can make uh, make those bets fair point vinit and for our audience like we are opening up for uh, questions so you can surely ask your questions to ravi and vinit and uh, please feel free to send in a speaker request meanwhile uh, you can also connect with their twitter handles for sharing their thoughts and sarb sarbjeet is uh, one speaker we which we have already so sarbjeet you can unmute and ask your question
Sarvjit Manku, you are on speaker. You can unmute and ask your question if any. So Ayush, uh, do you have any question? You can uh, go ahead, sure. Ayush Vadwani. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, do you guys track SME space? Hello. Yeah, yeah, you should. certain 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 places. Uh, what's your view on Katsis? Ayush, uh, we are very sorry for this. We are not going to answer company specific questions. So, okay. Sorry for that. Uh, no problem. Next, next in line is Rohit. Rohit, you can unmute and ask your question. Uh, no, actually, I also had a company specific question, but if that's not allowed, uh, I just wanted to ask if anybody is tracking infra sector, any specific input out there. I did see. Uh, we need a uh, timeline where he <clears throat> mentioned that he has some uh, positions in invest infrastructure. Uh, so any any view about that as a whole, uh, that will be appreciated. Sure. Uh, so I like the infrastructure sector. Uh, and in fact, that's one of the sectors where I think that there is a disparity uh, in terms of the value that the market's ascribing to certain players, uh, which have a reasonable track record and have uh, been doing well as compared to others. And I think that's, that is definitely one space where opportunity exists. I think infrastructure itself can be broken down into multiple subcomponents, right? Uh, I'll tell you the parts of the infrastructure that I like. Uh, I think on the power uh, value chain, uh, I like the transformer space uh, quite a bit even now, even after, even though, you know, stocks have run up. Uh, but I think there are significant tailwinds and, uh, you know, uh, there are a couple of players where valuation comfort still exists to a certain extent. Uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the railway side of the infrastructure piece, there are, uh, you know, certain players in... Uh, uh, in in container manufacturing and uh, you know and and other auxiliaries, the non wagon makers, people who are supplying to the value chain uh, of railway contracts, and I think that's the place where value discovery has not yet uh, happened in the market because everybody is you know going ahead and buying uh, the frontline names, the wagon manufacturers, because that's the most obvious beneficiary of the massive spending that the government is doing on railways. But when those players get orders. Uh, those orders get passed on to a bunch of players in the value chain and uh, there are pockets there, which I really like. And we can always discuss these offline uh, if you'd want to. Uh, on the EPC side of things as well, both the power EPC as well as uh, construction and infrastructure EPC, I think there are players which offer uh, value, especially EPC players that are focused on real estate. Uh, and... Uh, you know, specifically, I'm. Uh, if, you, if you look at my timeline, you see that uh, I track the, uh, you know, the the MMR focused real estate players quite closely, uh, and I think there are, uh, you know, certain EPC companies that are focused on MMR real estate, uh, which I think have, you know, excellent order books. Couple of companies have order books which are five times their present market cap and uh, you know six times their present sales values as well so you have those kind of opportunities and these are available at not exorbitant valuations you know 20 times trailing earnings uh so uh when you have that kind of growth visibility in a sector that has a tailwind and you know even though epc is a sector that over long durations of time will probably not make you money because there will be uh, an up cycle when there'll be margin expansion and then there will always be a down cycle where margin will contract but then it's important uh, to realize that this is cyclical and try and play the upcycle uh, if you understand that upcycle. Uh, but it's also equally important to make sure that these don't become buy and hold over long periods of time investments. Uh, these have to be timed well. And so, you know, uh, I would only advise people who are tracking this space closely to wager bets in this space because these are all deep cyclicals and the cycle can 
turn before the numbers start showing and stock prices start reflecting you know the reality of uh, turns and cycles much faster than uh, numbers do uh, so yeah, just the word of caution out there for anybody wanting to play it but i'm very bullish on infrastructure as a whole ravi bhai same question to you also so like yeah i mean i completely agree with vinith bhai uh, that uh, in price space uh, like even i am very keen on and uh, like but at the same time uh, uh, this particular space has attracted a lot of uh, attention uh, and by attention i mean like investment uh, like whether it be like power epc or like you know constr- uh, like uh, construction epc companies or like even for that matter real estate related or like you know i mean uh, uh water supply uh, sewerage drainage whatever like you know the entire spectrum of things uh it has attracted a lot of uh, like you know attention in uh, the in the recent time yes the certain verticals are like very clearly poised to continue doing good but in my opinion one needs to be very careful about the past track record of the company whether they can implement the you know so so priced and so much discussed order book which they have got or not and second is that what distincts them from their peers for example like i will give an example of a particular uh, like epc player in uh, like infra domain uh, like it is into construction part uh, they have like very uh, rich experience in you know coastal and marine construction in like few of the major cities across the world and as a result of which they have this uh, like capacity to and this uh, like you know overall uh, what i like to put as like you know people uh, processes procedures in place which enables them to you know implement projects in a very timely manner without like you know diluting or affecting the quality much last but not the least since this sector is very capital intensive uh like it is very uh, imperative for like you know while one is looking at a particular company to understand the overall financial profile of the company as well as the like core promoter's ability to back the company just in case anything goes wrong okay because like if you uh, when you, you read uh, like you know specific companies there are companies which have very conservative fine, uh, you know uh, like uh, standards procedures uh, uh, with respect to financial reporting such companies will definitely you know tend to fare better as compared to the others so one needs to be very vigilant because as vinith bhai very rightly pointed out this sector is uh, this uh, this vertical is very rewarding but at the same time it's very cyclical in nature and like you know uh, the the cycle may turn uh, negative even before you know stock prices actually start reflecting it so it's like trying to walk on thin ice thanks ravi great points by vinith and ravi so definitely both sides need to be looked any follow up rohit uh, uh no thanks uh, both uh, for the views uh, and i just wanted to point out that what i am seeing is uh, like in the last cycles particularly in the infra companies uh we saw when the downturn downturn came a uh, lot of these balance sheets were leveraged but I, what i notice now is there is enough funds in terms of these companies raining, uh, raising funds instead of debt but why are you know expanding their equity like we just saw one of the qips got successful and uh, their balance sheet don't look over over uh, you know they are not heavy on debt uh, this time so yeah i don't know how it turns out when the cycle turns uh, later but seems like they are very vigilant in terms of uh, raising funds now and then you know how they want to leverage their balance sheets mm. uh, but pretty good insights uh, from both of you thanks a lot mm. so that's an important point you mentioned over that uh, so uh, i think it's a double x word uh, to be honest with you and i don't know if you, mm. you know we're talking about the same company that raised money via qip yeah. recently one of the companies that i own recently raised money via qip just a couple of days back mm-hmm. i have mixed feelings about this to be honest with you. uh i would want uh uh you know companies that i want to to not to i, I would not want to live in the fear of getting diluted out on a regular basis because this company has raised money now they raised money 6 months back as well when i thought they had a bunch of 20 25 30 odd percent lower uh price so it's 
it's almost as if the run up in the stock price has uh you know they are they're using it opportunist, opportunistically which is good in a way at the same time uh if the nature of the business which it which it is which requires a constant influx uh of capital if if this means that every 6 to 8 months companies are going to keep diluting existing shareholders uh then that's not necessarily a good thing from an equity investor's point of view uh i would want uh, the companies that i own to be able to straddle between raising equity capital at the right valuations at the same time being able to manage their uh working capital cycle so that the requirement of equity raising or uh, you know even even debt capital uh is 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 not very high so i think yeah this has to be it's a very nuanced subject uh and uh, it's, it's it's not you know enough in my view to say that the balance sheet is clean because there's no debt on it uh the i think you must look at the balance sheet not just at not just from debt but also from working capital cycles and try and see if there is a you know meaningful improvement in working capital cycles for these companies over the last 6 8 months when you know the tailwinds seem uh, apparent and i think that's one of the things that we must track over the next few months and that could be uh, one of the early indicators for uh, uh, you know turning off the cycle as also yeah ravi bhai yeah. Ah uh, no! Like uh, Vinid Bhai pointed out uh, that uh, point. Uh, even I wanted to say that only that that it's a d- double-edged sword. Uh, it gives us like cues which are positive, but at the same time one needs to be very cautious because at the end of the day, raising capital means like your equity is being diluted. And like in a very hardcore manner, if we talk like, then a company should be always in a condition that they meet their capital requirement from their own cash flows. uh this excessive addiction on like you know raising capital and that too when you know the uh, market is like pretty hot uh like it does have like certain you know uh, qualitative red flags also and lastly as far as that uh, uh, like you know debt and all uh, is concerned uh one needs to you know uh, like look at off balance sheet financing very properly when it comes to uh, like you know infra space so that's what i wanted to add yeah great thanks so, guys thanks guys yeah. next in line is manoj ji sir namaste ji manoj ji bataye yeah sir mera mera question portfolio regarding tha ki mere portfolio mein jaise bhi 12 share hain aur main sip karta hu aur maine par abhi kya hai ki mere portfolio pe jitne share hain सभी मेरे ख्याल से ओवर वैल्यूड हो रखे हैं तो मुझे क्या करना चाहिए सर एस आई पी का भी होल्ड कर देना चाहिए या अपने ही शेयर में करना चाहिए या कोई नया शेयर ऐड करना चाहिए सो रवि विनीत इफ यू वुड लाइक टू टेक दिस क्वेश्चन लाइक सर देखिए मेरी समझ से लाइक like, uh, कोई भी मार्केट को टाइम नहीं कर सकता अगर आपने जिन कंपनियों में इन्वेस्टमेंट की है उनको ऑब्वियसली आपने ड्यू डिलीजेंस एंड स्टडी करने के बाद उनकी क्वालिटी समझने के बाद ही किया है तो लाइक यू नो मतलब आ, आ, आपको यू शुड स्टिक विथ योर एस आई पी बिकॉज अगर वो कंपनियां अच्छी हैं फंडामेंटली अच्छी हैं तो ये देखिए ये जो चक्र है ओवर वैल्यूएशन का अंडर वैल्यूएशन का चलता रहता है बट एक जो गोइंग कंसर्न एक प्रॉपर स्ट्रॉन्ग कंपनी जो है उसका लाइफ स्पैन एंड बिजनेस साइकिल इज वे बियॉन्ड दीज मार्केट साइकिल्स सो आपको वो जज करना पड़ेगा एंड लाइक uh, like, बहुत लोग कोशिश करते हैं यू नो अपॉर्चुनिस्टिक बनने का मार्केट में बट जो मेरी समझ है इट्स uh, समथिंग it, जो बहुत ही मुश्किल है तो मैं तो यही सलाह दूंगा कि आप अपनी एस आई पी कंटिन्यू कीजिए हाँ आपने जो कंपनियां चुनी हैं वो बिल्कुल अच्छी क्वालिटी की होनी चाहिए जिनमें वो मादा होना चाहिए कि वो एक लंबे समय के लिए आपके लिए कंसिस्टेंट कंपाउंडिंग प्रोड्यूस कर सके ओके सर लेकिन अभी जैसे ना मेरे पास पॉडी कैप था तो 
अच्छी कंपनी है रखने का नहीं नहीं नहीं, 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 नहीं सर देखिए पॉली वही मैंने बोला ना कि अगेन शायद समस्या यहाँ पे है कि अच्छी का डेफिनेशन बहुत सब्जेक्टिव हो जाता है यहाँ पे लोगों को लगता है कि जिसमें पैसे बन गए वो अच्छी कंपनी है अच्छी वैसे नहीं होती सर पॉली कैब में पहले से भी आप एक चीज बताइए मुझे लाइक यू नो एक पर्टिकुलर सेक्टर में एक पर्टिकुलर कंपनी ही लगातार यू नो आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स नंबर दिए जा रही है क्वार्टर आफ्टर क्वार्टर क्वार्टर आफ्टर क्वार्टर एंड जो सेक्टर की लीडर है वो तक मैच नहीं कर पा रही है ये अपने आप में ही एक टेले टेल साइन होता है कि आप उसको और यू you नो know, अंदर तक जाके पढ़िए ओके ओके सर थैंक यू विनीत यू आल्सो वांट टू ऐड समथिंग टू इट नहीं और रियली यार आई थिंक रवि भाई ने बिल्कुल सही बात बताई है जो जो आप लोग जो भी एस अगर कर रहे हैं आपने एस के लिए कंपनी इसीलिए चुनी होगी क्योंकि आपको इस कंपनी पर भरोसा है आपने इस कंपनी के ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड को देखा है एस को मेरे ख्याल से एट अ मार्केट लेवल टाइम करने की जरूरत किसी को भी नहीं होनी चाहिए और करने की कोशिश भी नहीं करनी चाहिए मार्केट कॉल्स लेना बहुत मुश्किल होता है आई थिंक ये जो लोग कहते हैं ना कि यू कान टाइम द मार्केट इस बात में एट अ मार्केट लेवल डेफिनेटली काफी सच्चाई है ओवरऑल यू नो निफ्टी या सेंसेक्स के लेवल्स को अगर आप टॉप्स एंड बॉटम्स प्रिडिक्ट करने की कोशिश करेंगे तो आप शायद दो बार सही होंगे पर तीसरी बार जब आप गलत होंगे तब जितना आपने उन दो बारों में कमाया है उतना उससे ज्यादा आप तीसरी बार गवा देंगे या तो एप्सिल्यूट कॉस्ट में या अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट में तो इसको कंसिस्टेंटली कर पाना बहुत मुश्किल है देर इज अजन की यू नो इन्वेस्टर्स फ्रॉम फ्रॉम मेनी डेकेड्स अराउंड द वर्ल्ड इसको कोशिश कर रहे हैं पर वो कर नहीं पा रहे That said, stock level calls and stock level timing बिल्कुल की जा सकती है और मेरे हिसाब से in my view करनी भी चाहिए पर अगर आप एस आई पी कर रहे हैं दस से बारह कंपनियों में तो आपने अपनी तरफ से अपना ड्यू डिलीजेंस डेफिनेटली किया होगा जैसे रवि भाई ने कहा फंडामेंटली स्ट्रॉन्ग कंपनीज ऐसे सेक्टर्स में जो ग्रो कर रहे हैं इन कंपनीज के पास किसी प्रकार का कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज है एट द सेम टाइम Uh, कुछ ऐसा उन कंपनीज में ना रहा हो ना हो रहा हो जो आप एक्सप्लेन नहीं कर पा रहे जैसे पॉली कैप के केस में था एंड नॉट टू से दैट यू नो एनी ऑफ अस वुड हैव सीन व्हाट हैपन इन पॉली कैप कमिंग पर ये वो बात होती है ना कि ये सारा प्रोबेबिलिटी का खेल है एट द एंड ऑफ द डे तो कोई चीज अगर बहुत ज्यादा अच्छी है एंड इफ इट्स टू गुड टू बी ट्रू देन देन इट्स प्रोबेबली टू गुड टू बी ट्रू तो इट कुड वर्क टिल इट डजेंट वर्क तो ऐसी स्पेसिस से आप रहना दूर दूर रहने की कोशिश कीजिए जहां तक आप कर सकते हैं अच्छी फंडामेंटली स्ट्रॉन्ग कंपनी में एस आई पी जारी रखिए स्टॉक स्पेसिफिक कॉल्स आप डेफिनेटली ले सकते हैं अगर आपको लगता है कोई कंपनी जो आपके पास है uh, उसकी अगले दो तीन चार साल की ग्रोथ ऑलरेडी फैक्टर इन हो चुकी है प्राइस में In that case, you can consider, and then I would suggest not just stopping the SIP, but you completely use companies to sell out, and get some other better opportunity. You can use it also. But market level, pe time to do it is very difficult to do, and consistently, definitely very difficult to do. In fact, many times it happens that you have to time for the market, and you have to have a lot of confidence. And because of that, you will try to time for the market, and there will come a day when you will be very bad, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's, it's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you don't want to go down that spiral. It's a slippery slope, and you
नीचे जा रहा है तो ऐसा नहीं है कि नीचे नीचे भागता रहेगा राइट बट अपना पेशेंस लूज नहीं करना अगर आप उसको स्टडी करोगे ना पिछले दो तीन महीने के चार्ट पे डेली इंटरडे को डेली के चार्ट को लास्ट दो महीने के तीन महीने के छह महीने के तो आप एटलीस्ट कुछ कैश कर पाओगे उसमें से कि यार अगर ये ऊपर ही भाग रहा है तो उसके बाद कैसा भी करेगा फिर देर बाद तो कुछ रिवर्सल होता है क्या मेरे को एक बार वन टाइम एंट्री मिल सकती है कि मैं उसमें अपना प्ले कर जाऊं अगर मैं एक मूव भी खेल जाऊं तो मेरे को अगर कुछ पॉइंट्स मिल जाएंगे निफ्टी सॉरी टू स्टॉप इन बिटवीन लाइक वी आर डाइग्रेसिंग फ्रॉम द टॉपिक ऑफ टुडेस डिस्कशन मे बी वी विल इंक्लूड दीस लेवल्स एंड द स्ट्रेटजी इन फ्यूचर सेशन ऑफ आवर्स सो आई वुड आई मीन अपॉलॉजीज ऑन माय पार्ट बट रेस्ट्रिक्ट यू टू on on this submission and uh, definitely okay. will uh, uh, try to uh, have you in some discussion wherein we will be discussing the chart view and short term uh, things right sure okay dear rohit although you had asked your question quickly and mute and uh, keep a short uh, thing and then we go on to sachin and then we wrap up the session for today yeah No, no. Please go ahead. I just wanted to make a comment for Manoj Sharma ji when he pointed out on the poly cap that अपने आप को इतना disheartened मत करिए. A lot and lot of people got wrong on poly cap, and I don't think अभी भी कुछ established हुआ है till the time we get all the information. So ऐसे तो चीजें होती रहती हैं. So yeah, just and that comment. Prince, uh, Prince bhai, poly cap पे एक चीज और मैं add करना चाहूँगा. See, last जो closing हुई है. पॉली कैप की अगर वहां से भी आप देखें और अगर किसी ने सिस्टमेटिकली इन्वेस्ट किया है फ्रॉम नॉर्मल लेवल्स इन पॉली कैप आई एम प्रिटी श्योर कि वो अभी भी डिसेंट प्रॉफिट में होंगे द प्रॉब्लम एक चीज जो मैंने देखी है लाइक जो एक्सपेक्टेशंस हैं उनको लोग यू नो री एडजस्ट नहीं कर पाते हर कोई यही सपना देखता है कि फिफ्टी वीक लो पे मैं फिफ्टी वीक क्या लाइफ लोज पे मैं लूंगा और लाइफ हाइज पे मैं बेचूंगा तो होती है। है right. so, जी 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 अरे uh, actually, अभी जैसे एक जो फीलिंग आ रही है लोगों में मार्केट में बहुत ज्यादा बज है कि uh, मतलब मार्केट काफी एक टर्म यूज होता है ओवर हीटेड हो गया है या लेकिन अभी भी काफी सारे पॉकेट्स दिख रहे हैं और मतलब बहुत सारी संभावनाएं दिख रही हैं मार्केट में जैसे एक तो लिक्विडिटी का फ्लो क्रेडिट साइकिल के हिसाब से बढ़ना है बेसिक तौर पे अगर हम लोग बात करें तो आ, मार्केट तो लिक्विडिटी से ही चलता है अगर पैसा आना है तो कहीं ना कहीं तो वो पैसा लगेगा फार्मा हम देख रहे थे तो फार्मा में दो से चौबीस में मतलब दस परसेंट का ग्रोथ नजर आता है बीच में ऊपर गया फिर नीचे आ गया बट अगर 2014 से 24 का अगर स्पैन आप चेक करेंगे फार्मा इंडेक्स जो है तो 10 से 12 परसेंट का ग्रोथ है वहां पे तो इट्स मतलब सेलेक्टेड पॉकेट्स की बात अगर छोड़ दे सेलेक्टेड शेयर्स की बात अगर छोड़ दे तो एज ए होल फार्मा एज ए सेक्टर काफी प्रोमिसिंग लग रहा है और अभी जो जैसे इंडियन इकोनॉमी जिस हिसाब से ग्रो कर रही है जी का ग्रोथ है फाइव ट्रिलियन एंड सेवन ट्रिलियन की बात हो रही है और उससे भी ज्यादा की बात हो रही है लंबे स्पैन में तो प्रीमियमाइजेशन और कंजम्पन का जो थीम है वो मुझे लगता है कि ये गोइंग फॉरवर्ड काफी इम्पोर्टेंट रहेगा कंजम्पन के थीम में जो भी जिन भी कंपनियों के पास प्रीमियम सेगमेंट के प्रोडक्ट्स हैं तो दोज विल बी ग्रेट बेनिफिशियरी इन दो कमिंग टाइम्स टेक में आईटी के सेक्टर में हो सकता है मेरा एक बायस हो मैं करेंटली कुछ उससे रिलेटेड बुक पढ़ रहा हूँ बट आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस शायद मतलब एक नया गेम चेंजर होने वाला है और उसमें अब क्या होगा ये मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा है लेकिन समहाउ आईटी इज गोइंग टू प्ले अ बिग रोल एंड लॉट्स ऑफ डिस्ट्रप्शन विल हैपन इन आई तो ये है बाकी इलेक्शन के कंटेक्स्ट में प्रिंस जी मुझे जैसा लगता है अब 2003 में भी एक ऐसा थीम था हालांकि अभी उससे सिनेरियो चेंज है लेकिन उस समय भी हम लोगों को लगता था कि इंडिया साइनिंग के दम पे हम एनडीए वापस आने वाली है लेटस होप कि वैसा कुछ रिपीट नहीं हो लेकिन वो चेंज अगर मतलब 
जैसे हम बात करते हैं अगर 2003 में जैसा हुआ तो उसके बाद भी जो मतलब रैली आई वो काफी अच्छी रैली थी तो आ, अभी जो हम लोग बात कर रहे थे कि आ, इंडिया का ग्रोथ स्टोरी कोई आ, किसी पार्टी से रिलेटेड या कोई स्पेसिफिक गवर्नमेंट से रिलेटेड है नहीं है ये बात बिल्कुल सही है हंड्रेड परसेंट ऐसा लगता है कि ये चीज भले चेंज होगा तो उस समय अगर कुछ ऐसा सरप्राइजिंग रिजल्ट आ गया तो मार्केट विल रिएक्ट सरप्राइज इन अ सरप्राइज वे बट वो टेम्प्ररी ही होगा बस यही था इंफ्रा पे कुछ हमारा एक अपना अपनी सोच है कि इंफ्रा की की कंपनियों का में थोड़ा कंप्लायसेज uh, का इशू होता है कुछ गवर्नमेंट की पॉलिसीज भी बहुत अच्छी नहीं है अच्छी इन द सेंस कि बहुत सारे मैटर जो है गोइंग फॉरवर्ड ऑर्डर बुक जो है वो अर्निंग्स में नहीं चेंज हो पाते हैं आर्बिट्रेशन में चले जाते हैं मैटर लैंड एक्विजिशन के इशू है वो डिलेड हो जाते हैं तो इस वजह से मैं अवॉइड करता हूँ बट uh, उसमें बहुत सारी कंपनियाँ हैं जो अच्छा पैसा अभी दे रही हैं बस यही ऐड करना था great points uh, sachin ji and uh, definitely a great value addition to everyone around and that's the beauty of these interaction as uh, ravi and i were discussing that uh, the idea is to like question ourselves and uh, uh, keep looking for uh, answers like how and uh, what sh- we should be doing uh, in these uh, market situations and obviously everybody has uh, their uh, views and obviously uh, when we, when we have such interactions uh, there are uh, uh, things which are thought provoking and definitely we will listen to such conversations and so as to like uh, form a very sound process investing framework for ourselves because at the end of the day uh, the process is uh, supreme everything else falls in place if you have a sound process so ravi vinit any any closing remarks for today we had a very great session with you guys yeah i mean friends by the closing remark as per me is that like you know do not fall for the larger narrative or do not try to you know like behave uh, smarter than mr market uh, himself uh, money which we will make is directly proportional to you know the amount of time which we spend in the market not to you know the effort which we put in in trying to time the market if we are cognizant and we stick to the like you know the process or like whatever we are able to you know understand and apply them properly in a patient manner uh, like you know the uh, juncture at which uh, today india and india's economy is standing i do not see like you know why wouldn't anyone would make a pretty penny for themselves so prince i i want to speak on two two aspects here uh, yeah please in closing uh, one is a you know a more macro point and the other is more specific to portfolio positioning and maybe stock selection as well on a macro front uh, i just heard sachin ji ne abhi bataya ki unhone kaha and maybe this has been discussed before i joined the session uh, the outcome of the election and the implications that that could have on india's growth story in general and the markets in particular uh, and my sense is that jo discussion yahan par hua hai people uh, are of the view that uh, things will not change materially even if there is an unforeseen election outcome uh to be honest with you i don't subscribe to that view mere hisab se agar election outcome adverse hota hai then do change me too me too vinit bhai me too vinit bhai i agree with you uh, uh and, and i think is is situation ko 2003 se compare karna is very different for starters uh both on an economic front as well as a stock market uh front uh, and maybe if we just speak about stock market in particular Uh, we are trading at what 22 23 24 times uh, trailing earnings at a nifty level today uh, which is at the higher band of what we have been trading at in the past and obviously the reason we are trading at this band is because the market foresees a growth of 15 20 10 to 15% on earnings uh, and so agar aap forward uh, valuations uh, karenge then we are reasonably valued and we are attracting foreign capital as well there is a lot of confidence uh, 
in the domestic investors lots of things have changed and you know i think it's now fairly evident to all of us that a lot of fundamental things have changed in the last 10 years and i i won't get into the specifics of what all has changed but i think it's important to realize that the the direction of thinking has moved from more capital and more money to large scale social projects to more capital and more money to broader developmental projects and you know the push that you see in sectors like infrastructure defense uh technology digitization uh the massive push that this government has had on gst collections on you know minimizing tax leakages ye sari cheeze bahut hi fundamental and specific hai to this government if the government changes it's possible that these things will continue it's just that we don't know and if you look at or listen to the narrative that is being built by uh you know the the coalition uh the india coalition at the moment they are already speaking about directly or indirectly in certain states uh, about you know freebie cultures coming back uh, about loan waivers coming back uh, and not speaking as much about more spending on large scale infrastructure projects in fact if anything they are speaking about directly or indirectly again curbing these spendings because you know trying to paint a picture that money from these projects is going into the pockets of few people uh to ye jo vichar dhara hai i am a little worried about this uh, agar government change hota hai governments and you know tend to have a tendency to undo the good of the previous regime so that they can be made to look good themselves to agar ye hone laga aur agar jo cheeze is government ne pichle kuch saalon mein change ki hai fundamentally about the country agar jo nayi sarkar aati hai wo in cheezo kuch cheezon ko badalne lagengi to ek fundamental change in scenario ho sakta hai and that could lead to a broad derating of the overall market because uh, at the end of the day what is valuation right valuation is our confidence in the companies that we own being able to compound their earnings and their ability to compound earnings depends among other things largely on the plank of their being constant uh policy and favorable policy so agar isme koi change hota hai mere hisab se i will be very skeptical uh and i will not be surprised if it's not just a knee jerk reaction jaisa normally hota hai elections ke baad kuch samay ke liye agar adverse outcome aata hai market girta hai aur fir se rebound karta hai is case mein it's possible that as a now and we should all be aware to that possibility i'm not predicting anything all i'm saying is that agar adverse outcome elections ka aata hai just be mindful and do your own analysis on whether things for the country as a whole change fundamentally or not just that small point and secondly on a uh, you know more stock specific basis i think even though the market seems optically expensive and it is pockets are very very expensive we have never before seen micro caps trading at 120 150 times earnings uh, and some of them you know might grow into those earnings that's fine i think as we construct portfolios and this is the approach that i follow personally i try and align into companies and spaces where i think my risk reward is the highest and so i will always try and have more money into names if if for example i have name a and name b which are offering me a similar growth profile i will always allocate more funds to the name which is cheaper so i think ye valuations pe ek nazar rakhna bahut zaruri hai especially in these markets which are stressed to a certain extent with an event like the elections coming up which can fundamentally change uh you know the pitch that we're playing on agar wo suddenly jo flat pitch hai suddenly us pe agar ghas aa jaye then things can change materially and wo event kuch mahino mein hai of course the probability of that event happening are very low uh par is pe ek nazar hamari honi chahiye please focus on making sure that you buy at the right price kisi bhi cheez ke liye overpay na kare uh jo themes uh kafi zyada chal gayi hai market mein because uh, of narrative in all likelihood in companies mein growth definitely aayegi 
स्टॉक प्राइस में ग्रोथ आएगी कि नहीं वी डोंट नो इट्स यू नो इट्स फेयरली लाइकली दैट मेनी मेनी इयर्स ऑफ ग्रोथ विल गेट फैक्टर्ड इन इन अ शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड देन द ग्रोथ ऑफ द कंपनीज विल ग्रो इन टू द वैल्यूएशन सो आई जस्ट यू नो लीव एवरीबडी विद विद दैट वर्ड ऑफ कॉशन आई एम सॉरी टू Uh, you know, sound like a, a you know buzz kill in the party, but please be careful of what you pay for what you buy. If you try and buy uh, buy cheap and buy good companies uh, at at you know slightly lower valuation, at least the odds of you facing a drawdown reduce significantly. And I think reducing drawdowns is the single biggest uh, you know benchmark for long term success uh, in the markets. Uh, Yeah, that that's all thanks sasan and uh, definitely these are uh, the moot points which everybody should focus on and definitely like uh, various pointers like liquidity in the market election uncertainty uh, your margin of safety when you deep down on individual companies and finding out uh, which uh, sectors have uh, done really well in short period of time and which sectors are like kind of uh, neglected and uh, obviously uh, the domestic focused companies in the large and mid cap space and until unless you find very very screaming opportunities not to go about uh, on that with the incremental cash and definitely when market is doing good you should be cutting down on your uh, less conviction ideas and uh, uh, strengthening uh, the the companies in which you have uh, good uh, conviction uh, backed by your study so definitely there are many pointers and ravi uh, had discussed uh, in great detail that uh, and even vineet and sachin ji added uh, great pointers to that so definitely uh, we had a great session today so i request i our audience to connect with uh, Uh, Ravi Kant's and Vineet's handle and even Sachin sir's handle so that we can uh, bring them more often and definitely going forward uh, understand uh, the nuances of how they are placing themselves and obviously whenever we bring any speaker we try to uh, have their view subject to like that is backed by some data or some thesis or anti thesis pointers and the beauty of this session is like. two speakers agree on few points and they have a different view on certain points so that's the beauty in which you get an opportunity to make a, a sane decision in the sense like uh, uh, both the aspects are covered and definitely uh, these spaces are educational and meant for uh, the starting point only so with that note uh, i uh, thank everyone uh, for sparing time on a sunday evening and definitely will try to have more such sessions every sunday particularly discuss about uh, like what's going on and coming with different subjects or some uh, pointers around which we will be speaking and then a general discussion after that so thank you so much and if you are joining for the first time so you can surely connect with our handles and if you are already connected would love to have uh, feedback from you and definitely if you have any speakers to your mind who are into uh, long term investing obviously i myself don't do the fno and intra day trading kind of thing so i'm not in negating these are bad things but uh, i don't understand so my speaker line is more focused around the long term investors so any any suggestions on that front is also welcome and i'll be uploading this session very soon on my youtube channel i will highly encourage you guys to subscribe to that not because it's my channel but the quality of content uh, uh, which i have uh, i've been fortunate to have uh, such a great uh, uh, guest in the past and presently also so definitely uh, that is uh, going to be a great value addition uh, to everyone around and the diversity of uh, content available is uh, very very uh, rich so please have a look at it and if that matches your style definitely you can listen to our conversation thank you good night take care